Boys and girls, this is going to be the first video that is going to focus on proportional relationships. So on the screen right now, you can see that we're going to investigate and further identify whether or not a proportional relationship is found by looking at information that is in a table, by information that is represented in a graph, by information that may be best explained using an equation, and also by identifying whether or not a diagram, so a visual representation, has a proportional relationship in it. So we've been using proportions when thinking about our percent problems, and that's just when we have two ratios set equal to one another. So in order for us to see a proportional relationship between two different quantities, the table, the graph, the equations, the diagrams all have to show us that we have a common unit rate. So common unit rate is found in proportional relationships. This video is going to focus on tables. So for the rest of the slides, we're only going to be looking at tables and determining whether or not that table shows the two quantities having a common unit rate, therefore being proportional. So two quantities are proportional if they have a constant or the same ratio or rate. And that means that each one of the quantities or ratios that are found in the table, for example, here, 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 and here, all need to have a same unit rate. So in order to determine if the table is proportional, we need to test each ratio in that table. So the table that we're looking at says number of days compared to hours worked. And so this is kind of a running total table, right? So day one, it's a total of six hours worked. After two days, it's 12 hours have been worked. After three days, it's 18 hours have been worked. And after four days, it's 24 hours worked. So that doesn't mean that on day four, the person worked 24 hours straight. That's just that kind of cumulative idea. But in order to determine whether or not the person worked the same number of hours each day, we need to determine the unit rate and then determine if that unit rate is the same for day one, day two, day three, and day four. It's really important that you test all of the ratios in a table because if you don't, then you may determine that a table is proportional when it's really not, or you may determine that it is not proportional, and that's more so due to the fact that you've made a mistake with your math. So it's really important to check and double check your math when trying to determine if any of these types of relationships are proportional, not just in graphs, excuse me, not just in tables, but graphs, equations, and also diagrams. So with this particular table, we're looking at number of days and hours worked. And we have to keep in mind that when we look at this table, sometimes it's going to make more sense to set up our ratio so that it's not necessarily the first value in the table. Not necessarily this value in the table needs to be our numerator, but instead this value needs to be our numerator. Okay, so what I mean by that is it actually makes more sense for us to have hours worked compared to number of days. Okay, and so we're going to set each of these ratios, each of the ratios, meaning we're going to set this ratio and find a unit rate. So let's just go ahead and do that quickly. So this says hours worked. Oh no. 
hours worked, six hours worked, one day. Well, you know what? That's automatically a unit rate, okay? So as we look at this now, we're hoping that the rest of the table gives us six hours worked for every one day. So I'm just going to kind of write that so that we don't forget. Six hours per day is the unit rate according to this value in our table. So if I go on to the next one, now I'm looking at two days and 12 hours. Okay, so 12, I did it again. You guys understand what I'm trying to do. So we have 12 hours over two days. Okay, so that's going to equal one day. And we hopefully can see that if we go two days to one day, we're going to divide this numerator by two, giving us six hours per day for the second value in our table. So I'm going to put a check there because that works. We'll go on to the third one. We have 18 hours for three days. Okay, checking for a unit rate. I want that to be how many hours in one day. So divide by three, divide by three, I get six hours per day. Looking good. All right, and most of you have probably looked ahead to see that that last value is 24 hours over four days would equal something compared to one day. Four divided by four is one day, so 24 divided by four gives us six hours per day. Okay, so this table shows a proportional relationship. And once you've identified that there's a proportional relationship, then they often say, well, what is the unit rate? So we would be able to say that the unit rate here is six hours worked for each day of work or each day that we're counting in this particular table. All right, so this table is showing us time in hours and distance traveled in miles. So you may be inclined to try to say that we're going to find these unit rates saying time compared to distance. But that's going to tell us how long it takes for us to travel one mile as that unit rate. So we don't really want to have that, okay? The better way for us to describe this unit rate would be able to say distance compared to time, which in this case is going to be those miles compared two hours. Okay, so as I take a look at this table, I am going to move it down just slightly and slide this up here. I'm going to start to determine do each one, do each one of these have the same unit rate? Okay, so distance, 90 miles compared to two hours of time is going to give me one on my bottom, and x, okay? So this is the same process, but this is pretty easy here. I know that if I divide both of these by two, I will get an answer. Some of you may be more comfortable doing cross multiplication and division, and that's completely fine. But I know here that this is going to give me 45 miles traveled in one hour of time. Okay. Now notice on this table, the table doesn't give me one hour, okay? So I need to check these other three to determine do all of them simplify or all of them have that same unit rate of 45 miles for each hour, okay? So now let's check the next one. We have 135 miles over three hours is equal to x over one. So again, I can divide both by three, okay, and hopefully I will notice that this does give me that 45 miles, you can use a calculator of course, 45 miles for one hour, okay. 
So it's looking pretty good. So I'm going to slide my table down again, move this up a bit more, and go ahead and test the next value. So the next value is the value that says we've traveled 225 miles over five hours of time. So in one hour of time, what does that mean? Okay. So again, I'm going to divide by five, divide by five, and 225 divided by five, five goes into 22, four times. This is looking good. 20, bring down that five, 45. So this one also gives me 45 miles for one hour. Looks very promising. All right, so the last one tells me uh, 270 miles traveled in six hours. So again, here we go. 270 hours, excuse me, 270 miles traveled in six hours of time is going to give me a unit rate of X miles over one hour of time on your calculator or on your paper. We're going to divide 270 by 6 because 6 divided by 6 gives me one hour. 6 goes into 27 four times. That's 24. 27 minus 24 is 3. Bring down that 0. And 6 goes into 30 exactly five times. So we're left with 45 miles for one hour. Okay. So we can say... See if I can grab my table and bring it down here. Not that table. Bring down this table. Slide this up. Okay. So we can say that this table, okay, has a proportional relationship. Okay. Is proportional. And you know it's proportional because every single value in this table has the same unit rate. Okay, so then once we identify if it's proportional, we say the unit rate is, and we calculated that to be 45 miles per hour of time. All right, so now let's go on and do a couple more, and hopefully as we do this, you will see that as long as you check every single value in the table, okay, and that means this way, going between the two quantities, if it's proportional, then you just have to identify the unit rate. And if there's no constant unit rate, then it is not a proportional relationship. With this next table, it shows movie downloads. It gives us the number of movies downloaded and it gives us the cost in dollars. So, I would start by looking at this problem and identifying that if this is going to be proportional, each one of these ratios has to give me a unit rate that gives me $3, that's not very easy to read, that gives us $3 per one movie. So, if I take a look at this, I notice that right away that second ratio isn't going to give me a $3 per one movie rate. So, I'm pretty confident that I can tell you right now that this is not proportional. Not proportional means that there is no unit rate. Okay? Because $5 for two movies gives me a unit rate of $2.50. And for the next set of information, I have $7 for three movies. That's going to give me $2.33 for each movie. 
And then for the last one, I'm going to see that it's $9 for four movies. That's going to give me one movie being $2.25. So this table is not proportional and it does not have a unit rate. However, you would say it does make sense for me to download more movies than just one because as I increase the number of movie downloads, the price per movie decreases. Okay, so there are a few things we can take away from this. Even though it's not proportional, it may be advantageous to you to download more movies in terms of saving money. Let's take a look at this problem. So this is talking about our resting heart rate. Resting heart rate, time, calculated in seconds or recorded in seconds, and heartbeats. So again, when we think about our unit rate, it probably makes more sense for us to determine how many heartbeats per second. So I'm just going to abbreviate that with heart, oops, heartbeats per second. Okay, makes more sense rather than saying seconds per heartbeat. Okay, either way, if you can eat, if you keep your calculations consistent for all values in the table, as long as you have a consistent unit rate, then you can still identify whether or not this is proportional. Okay, so remember, the first thing that we want to determine is, is it proportional? And if it is, what is the unit rate? Okay, so that's our focus for each one of these tables that we take a look at. Okay, so if I move my table, well, that's not really what I want to move. I want to move my table. My table won't move. Okay, I'm just going to squeeze this down then and kind of put it over here. So if I start my table and think about heartbeats per second over time, excuse me, heartbeats over time. So I'm going to start with... Heartbeats over seconds is equal to 6 over 4. Heartbeats per second is equal to 9 over 6. And heartbeats per second is equal to 15 over 10. And heartbeats per second is over 18 to 12. Okay, so each one of these is set equal so that we can determine if we have the same unit rate. Okay, so as I look at this, I'm going to divide by 4. And 6 divided by 4. So quickly, okay, you can identify 6 fourths is really just 6 divided by 4. So if I have to divide by 4 here, I'm going to make this 6 fourths. I notice it's improper, so I'm going to say 1 and two-fourths, I notice that that can be simplified yet again to give me one and one-half. One and one-half heartbeats per second. So I'm just going to kind of circle that and hope that as I go through the rest of these, it works. You don't have to do them in order. So I'm going to jump over to 18 heartbeats in 12 seconds. In order to go from 12 to 1, I'm going to divide by 12. 18 divided by 12 would look something like this. 1 and 6 twelfths. 6 twelfths is equal to 1 half, so we have 1 and 1 half compared to 1 second of time. So, so far, it's looking good. Back over to 9 heartbeats for 6 seconds, I'm going to identify that I divide both parts by 6. 9 sixths simplifies to 1 and 3 sixths, which then simplifies again to 1 and 1 half over 1 second. So 1 and a half heartbeats for every second. So far, three of our values in our table are proportional. If this last one is proportional, 
then we can identify that the table is proportional, meaning the relationship of heartbeats to seconds is proportional because it has the same unit rate. So taking a look over here, 15 divided by 10 gives me 1 and 5 tenths, gives me 1 and 1 half compared to 1 second of time. Okay, so I am able to identify that yes, it is proportional, and I am able to say that it is one and a half heartbeats for one second of time. Now that you've watched the video, I would like for you to take a look at the three problems that are posted on the screen and use your notes and examples from the video to determine whether the set of the numbers in each table is proportional. So remember that you need to test by determining whether or not each ratio in the table has a constant unit rate or the same unit rate. If it does, you can determine that yes, it is proportional and you can identify that unit rate. If there is no unit rate that is constant, then you need to explain why the table is not proportional. And then number three, we should be able to set up using our typical proportion for thinking about what are we comparing in words, what is our known ratio, and what is our unknown ratio. This one's asking you to find the unit rate first and then determine how much money does it cost for 18 and a half gallons of gasoline. We will go over the answers to these three problems in class.